Hello and welcome to The Look Ahead for Friday the 26th of April with me Fiona Sinkota, Senior Market Analyst at City Index. So overnight we're expecting the interest rate decision from the Bank of Japan and tomorrow the main focus will be on US core PCE, the Federal Reserve's preferred gauge for inflation. We also have tomorrow US Michigan confidence and earnings from NatWest Group in the UK. In the US, we'll be looking at ExxonMobil and Chevron. So just kicking off with US core PCE. So as I said, the Fed's preferred gauge for inflation is expected to cool to 2.6% year on year, down from 2.8%. On a monthly basis, expected to hold steady at 0.3%. Now, it's going to be watched really closely because we've seen CPI tick higher now for three straight months. So the market's going to be watching for signs of sticky inflation, which could re um, cause the market to push back further on Fed rate cut expectations. Now, it's interesting because the data comes after today's um, GDP figures, which show the US GDP, uh, the economy grew at a slower pace in Q1. But interestingly, core PCE was much hotter than expected at 3.7% in Q1, up from 2% and well ahead of the 3.4% expected. So with that in mind, I think there's going to be even more focus than usual on, um, on the core PCE figures. Now, this is gold that we're looking at, um, obviously very tied to the US dollar, strength of the US dollar and also movements in yield. Um, the other thing that to keep in mind is not only um, is sort of interest rate expectations being driving gold, but also central bank buying. And also we have had previously um, risk uh, safe haven flows when sort of tensions in the Middle East have ramped up. Um, so at the moment, we've seen uh, quite a sharp fall off in gold, actually. It fell from above the 2400 level down to 2300. And that's the support that it found this week. Now, if we get hotter than expected inflation, we might find that gold comes under more pressure and will sort of retest that, that 2300 level. However, looking at the chart, I mean, that sell off that we've seen, it did bring the price below the rising trend line, but it did also bring the RSI out out of overbought territory. So the rebound that we've seen today at the moment is up around 20, uh, 2330. We could see a retest of that rising trend line resistance, especially if we get signs of cooling inflation that could really help um, weaken the dollar further and send gold higher. Um, a rise above 2350 can bring that 2400 back into target. Um, so as well as watching gold, we'll also be watching what's going on with the um, US stocks um, in relation to the reaction to uh, US core PCE data. Now, it's really interesting because stocks are selling off today. Um, obviously, we've had some, well, you know, the data from the earnings from Meta were actually very good. But the market wasn't too keen on the slightly weaker revenue um, and also the um, the prospect that the year of efficiencies is over for Meta as they look to ramp up spending again. Obviously, overnight, we've got sorry, after the close, we've got still to come Microsoft and also Alphabet. So that could set the tone for tomorrow as well. But if we get stronger than expected inflation, there is a very good chance that we could see the sell-off in US stocks continue as the market pushes back on Fed rate cut expectations, which have really been pushed up quite a lot this year. I mean, the market's now actually only fully pricing in one rate cut before the end of the year. Um, so, and that's potentially going to be around September time, uh, pushed back from expectations of June a few months ago. Now, if we have a look at this chart, we can see the Dow has sold off really quite sharply. Um, it's testing the 3800 level. We've got that bearish engulfing candle combined with the RSI below 50 does suggest that we could see um, further sort of sell off to come. 38,000, that's the level sellers are going to be looking to take out. If they can get below that, that's going to bring the zone of 37,300 to 37,170. They're the April lows and the January lows. Um, and if we get a breakthrough that level, it's going to get a fresh 2024 low. 
and um, see an extension of the sell-off towards the 200 SMA. If we do find that 38,000 does hold, then buyers are going to be looking towards the 38,550. That's the weekly high as a level on the upside. And above there, then we've got the 50 SMA at 38,830. And the other one to be watching very closely, we can't take our eyes off at the moment, is USD Japanese yen. And the reason that this is sort of attracting so much attention is because it's crossed that threshold of 155, which was the level that the perceived line in the sand for um, intervention by Japanese authorities. Now, there hasn't been any intervention um, despite the threat, but we've also got the Bank of Japan decision overnight. Now, the Bank of Japan is not expected to move on interest rates, but with the weaker yen, with signs of sticky inflation and with wage growth, maybe we're going to get a slightly more hawkish tone from the Bank of Japan, which could support the yen and bring the USD Japanese yen down slightly. But if we don't get that, I mean, if we don't hear any dovish, uh, sorry, hawkish tilt from the Bank of Japan, then there is very much potential for this to be heading towards the 130 level, especially if we see hotter than expected US inflation data tomorrow as well. Um, now, as I said, if we, above 155, the level um, afterwards, really, it will be 160 that we could be looking at as far as support is concerned, I mean, the immediate support is that 155 level. Below that, you've got a minor support around the 153.60 level and then 152, which was the previous high for March. So they're the levels to be watching. Uh, I do hope that you like what you have seen today. And if you do, then please do give the video a like. And if you would like to receive more videos like this, then do follow.